this week's teaching today is probably one of the most important teachings. It carries secrets to receive the anointing. There are secrets and mysteries to receive the anointing. But the thing is, is that it's not something so like hard to find. It's not like God is like hiding it. Like, I don't want you to find it, like making it difficult. The secrets of, of accessing the anointing to walk in God's power. It's nothing like that, but it's the fact that you need to have spiritual eyes to see. You need to be sensitive to when the secrets are released. So what I'm going to teach today, to some people, maybe it just sounds like another teaching. Maybe it doesn't sound that like, whoa, you know, <laughs> maybe it sounds basic or something, but I'm telling you, you need to, you need to value this. You need to take it seriously. This is literally like secrets handed to you. What I'm going to be teaching today is how to be humble, how to be humble. In the word of God, there's the word of God just carries so much powerful revelation for us to know the kingdom, to understand the kingdom, to receive the kingdom, to inherit the kingdom, to access the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom. And there's one piece of gold, like treasure, hidden treasure, scripture that teaches us how to access the anointing. And that is Luke 10, 21, Luke 10, 21. So the disciples, when they first came back from casting out demons, they were amazed and they were telling Jesus, wow, the demons obeyed us just like you. And Jesus, he says, Jesus was filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit. And he said, oh, father, Lord of heaven and earth, Thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves wise and clever and for revealing them to the childlike. Yes, Father, it pleased you to do it this way. So powerful. This reveals it right here. The secrets, the mysteries of how to access the anointing. The Passion Translation says, Jesus says to the Father, you've hidden the revelation of your authority. So it, it, God has hidden the revelation of how to access the anointing, how to walk in authority over demons, like how to properly execute that author authority effectively where demons will obey and how to access that powerful anointing in your life because it's the anointing that makes the demons go. That's everything. So many people, they think of it like, okay, how do you cast out demons? Um, how, how do you do that? Uh, and they, they do all these, they, they think it's like a works thing. Like, tell me the formula of how much you fast, of how much you pray. Um, what's your technique with casting the demons out? Like, what are the words that you say? And did, they think it's like a works thing. They think, they think it's like something they can figure out, like a formula, like, like you can learn you know kind of in the world's way physically kind of thing like go to like physical school or something but it's the anointing that destroys the yoke it is the the anointing is everything it, it, it's it's like once you have the anointing it's the anointing in you doing everything you don't have to do much you don't have to like fight demons you're just a vessel of jesus in power and it's Jesus who does everything. You walk in your authority, but you just do it very simply. And you don't have to do much. You, 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 you walk in your authority, and then you allow God to move through. So it's you walk in the authority, yes, but it's God doing everything through you, doing the supernatural stuff, doing the casting out of demons. So it, the anointing's everything. It it should not we should not have our mindset of how do i cast out demons how do i get demons to obey but rather how can i access the anointing simple like simply that that should be it so 
Jesus reveals it right here. The ones who access the anointing are the childlike ones, the humble ones, the ones who are wise and clever, who are prideful and who are know-it-alls and who are not humble. Jesus says right here that the father literally hides these things. So in other words, um, God does not put the anointing <laughs> and God doesn't want to give them the anointing when they're that way. It's hidden, these mysteries. So that's why I say that this message is so important. How to be humble, how to be humble. And um, I, I, I feel like it's not taught on much. It's kind of said like, yes, be humble, be humble. But it's not actually taught. It's not actually taught like what does humility look like and how do I be humble and how do I know I'm humble? How do I know I'm prideful? And this is really important because th this is like everything. So um, see, humility in the world's way is not glamorous, is not, it, it's not something to be sought after. And humility in the church today unfortunately it, it hasn't like in the body of christ state today by and large it hasn't been put as priority i don't remember hearing even like my whole life growing up in church i don't even remember hearing hardly any messages about humility much preaching about humility and instead things are much, very much focused on like don't sin and and then, and, and, and people themselves are like focusing on how they can look, you know, as a Christian, they're focusing on like, okay, I'm doing all the right things. I'm not, you know, doing drugs, sleeping around. I'm reading my Bible every day. I'm going to church every day. I'm serving in the church. I'm going to Bible study. And so on the outside, they look like they have it all together to their Christian friends, to their peers, to their leaders, maybe they're trying to impress or something. They're looking perfect, right? Um, the way they speak, they speak so spiritual. <laughs> but there's something that, that's been really neglected and it's the heart. That's the place where this humility lies, is the heart. Acts 13, 22, after removing Saul, he made David their king. God testified concerning him. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. So here we have a, 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 an example of an anointed servant of God. When you look in the word of God and you're thinking, okay, what were the anointed ones like? What made God choose them? What made God choose David? It actually says it in the word. It says, God says, I have found David, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. And then there's another scripture where when God is choosing David, he says, you all look at the outward appearance but I look at the heart. That's when David was disqualified by his own father and his brothers. No one thought that he would be the chosen king, but God saw the heart. That shows us that that is how God chooses who to anoint, who to pour out his anointing in, is one thing. It's, it's the heart. It's the heart. You know, so... I think as Christians today and, and like in the body of Christ today, as I was sharing, like there's so much emphasis on the outward and it's like people sometimes don't want to surrender their heart. They don't want to surrender every part. And so they're just trying, they're trying to just look good to everyone else and living in denial that God sees everything, that God sees the heart. You can hide your heart from other people but you can't hide what's in your heart from God. 
he sees it all. And this is the most important thing, the, the status of our heart. I mean, this, it, it's God's will for you to walk in the anointing. And this is fulfilling your purpose. So if you don't want your life to be a waste, but if you want your life to be purposeful and do what God actually created you to do, you need to give the most attention to your heart. Instead of ignoring it, neglecting it, living in denial because no one else can see your heart in the world. The thing that matters most in the entire world is to please God, is to touch his heart, to be a man or woman after his heart. That's everything. That's the most important, the most important job you have, the most important thing you can do in this world is to every day be after his heart, touch his heart, please him. And you cannot neglect your heart in that area. The heart is the most important part of being able to touch his heart. Okay, so first of all, um, First of all, I want to share, as I was meditating on humility, I realized that it cannot be like how to be humble and everything like this message. I realized it cannot be condensed into an hour message. So I'm going to be sharing some of the big ways of, of how to be humble and how to be able to like tell if you're humble or not, or if you have a lot of work to do, if there is pride there. So the first, the first area right now I'm going to share of how to be humble is that you must have the fear of God. You must live in the fear of God. The fear of God does not mean being afraid of God, but it means having deep reverence and respect for God. So it's to live every day in the revelation that God, he is your master. You are his servant. He is your Lord. He is king. You must be submitted to him. This is what matters more than anything. Anything is for you to obey him, to serve him, to be in his will, to never take a step out. This is what's most important. And it needs to be in your heart deep that this is the most important thing to you, that it's so important that it would just absolutely grieve you if you were to disappoint God. I mean, if you were to disobey him and step out of, step out of God's will, it would grieve you. It would be like the, the saddest thing. That's really how we should be. That's the fear of God, is this intense passion. I, I want to please God. I want to I touch his heart every day. I never want to step out of his will. And when you live that way, there's a lot of people that ask, like, how can I know I'm in God's will? And they're, like, afraid. Am I missing something? Am I missing my purpose? Am I, am I in God's will or not? And I'm telling you, you... You don't need to be afraid of that if you have the fear of God. If you really have the fear of God, and this isn't about a feeling, this is about making the intention to have the fear of God. Um, if you have the fear of God, you will be in his will because God is it wants you to be in his will more than you do. And if that is your intention, if that is your heart, then... God is so good. Why, why would he allow you to step out of his will when that's your heart? People step out of his will when people don't fear God. But if you fear God, you can rest knowing you are in his will. The Bible says that God directs the steps of the righteous man or woman. So in other words, the righteous man or woman who has the fear of God, God directs your steps. He will Every day he will close doors that need to be closed and he will open doors that he wants to open. He will move mountains. He will shift things. He will do supernatural things to make sure you're in his will. You can rest, but you, you need to have the fear of God. And there's a lot of Christians that are not in God's will. There's a lot of Christians that are 
literally just walking out of God's will every single day because of one reason, they don't have the fear of God. They don't care enough. But it's like when you have that fear of God, it's like it's like locking you in to God's will. It's the safe place. So that's the first thing. You need to live in this fear of God that it would seriously grieve you to be a step out of his will. And if you can just do that, the, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you can just do that, this is where wisdom comes. This is where you're really going to be able to hear God's voice and have discernment and be able to discern when the angel of light is coming in a sneaky way. Um, the Bible, those of you that don't know the fear, what that is, the angel of light, the Bible says that Satan masquerades himself as an angel of light meaning Satan can come in a sneaky way that sounds spiritual, that sounds like God, um, but it isn't God because there's so many godly things we could be doing right now, right? But there's only one thing that God wants us to do, right? Like right now, I could be reading the Bible, but God is calling me to go minister and then people aren't going to be free because I'm reading my, I'm like, no, I'm reading my, reading the Bible is important, but like right now, this is the only thing that's in God's will, <laughs> You see, so um, when you have the fear of God, you're able to have wisdom and hear God's voice. Hallelujah. Number two, you need to evaluate your heart. Psalm 129, verse 23. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So this scripture, search me, God. I want to read this again because this is powerful. Search me, God, and know my heart. So search me, God, know my heart. So, you know, to have the fear of God is like, Lord, I want every part of me to be pleasing to you. I want every part of my heart to be pleasing to you. Um, I come naked before you. I'm not um, ashamed of anything because I'm not trying to live a double life. You know, I'm not trying. I'm not trying to hide a certain part of my life and hope you don't see it or something, which is just silly and is living in denial. Um, but no, like I know that I have work to be done. I and that's nothing. Nothing to be ashamed about because we don't look like Jesus exactly on day one of being a christian that it does not work it will never work like that we have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind as we continually look at jesus and allow him to mold us like clay in his hands it's a process so there's nothing to be ashamed about dirt in your heart there's nothing to be ashamed about serious work that needs to be done um you need to let go of shame, all of that, the lies of the devil, and be naked before God and let him see every part of you. Let him examine your heart. Let him search your heart. Let him test your heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Test me and know the impure thoughts I'm having, the, the impure desires I'm having that aren't of you. Test those, know them, look at them, find them, and help me, Lord. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So this is such a powerful verse because this is saying, Lord, I want to look just like you. I want to think just like you. I want to see people like you see them. But I need your help, and I need you to come and put your hands, your potter's hands on my heart and and help me i can't do this on my own i need you so lord look at all these offensive ways impure ways look at these and do something help me Ch remove them mold me change me and that's when god is able to that's when you're able to be transformed that's the only way is when you become naked before God and you say, I don't want to live this double life. I don't want to live my life with these 
with these selfish motives. I don't. I just want your will, God. I just want to be exactly like you. I just want to please you with my thoughts. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, Lord. That's in the Psalms. That should be our prayer. That should be our prayer. Amen. And there's just a lot of that that doesn't happen today in the body of Christ. There's a lot of that where people are wanting to hold on to their selfish ambitions and live a double life and look Christian and feel like you're fooling God, but you cannot fool God. And it's time we understand that. It's time we really get real about this. You can't fool God. Stop it. It's just hurting yourself. Amen. So uh, allow God to evaluate your heart. And part of the evaluating your heart of allowing God to evaluate your heart is you evaluating like you need like that's how you're able to be transformed is when you're part of the process with God it's not like okay God I pray for you to just give me a new heart and I woke up and I had a different heart (laughs) we have to do the work with God like we have to look with god we have to let god show us you see this part is offensive to me my daughter my son this part is impure and so we're going to take this out will you give this to me so you have to go with god and allow him and like hear his voice saying like this is pride here my daughter so will you give this up i'll take it right now if you will give it up if you'll surrender it to me this right here my daughter my son you're being judgmental but i'm not calling you to judge this person you're looking at at the the speck in their eye and that's making you to have a log in your eye because you're being critical and of this person when that's not your job your job is to love them you know like this scripture about search me god know my heart and lead me in the way everlasting so you're god's leading you he living this life every day like lord let's do inventory in the heart let's look here show me lord and he shows you these things these as you go throughout your day, like the thoughts you have, the impulses you have, the feelings you have towards people, the things you're feeling, the things you want to say, the things you are saying, that's impure, that's judgmental, that's prideful. God will, when you pray this prayer, when you want this, when you want God to search your heart, he'll show you, he'll say, he'll convict you. And it's this process of you surrendering that. And when you surrender, you change and you, it doesn't even take you that long to change. If you'll just go through this process with God and allow him to take it and change you. So pride is connected to impurities of the heart. So if you have impurities in your heart, there's usually going to be pride attached to. So like this message is, is, is to help you see because some of, some of you may not realize that you are being prideful in certain areas. And so this message is going to help you. It's going to open up your spiritual eyes to see, oh, wow, I do have pride here. That's pride. And, and, and so that's, that will humble you and God will take it and it will make you be humble. So um, as, you evaluate, as you yourself evaluate, you need to evaluate your heart. You need to take inventory in your heart. You need to be looking with as god's showing you you know um looking at these impurities and 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 looking at really what's going on here so um by the way um if you are having certain feelings that's impure and i'm going to go over like specific specific impurities but if you're having feelings certain impure feelings that's impure not good thoughts that doesn't automatically mean that you are impure and sinful in these areas and have pride but it's when you act on them that you are then prideful you are then sinful in this area, impure in this area. And this is what a lot of people don't understand is that your feelings are not you. The, the devil sends, um, the devil, just like he sends bad dreams out of nowhere when you're not even thinking about something impure, 
uh, and bad. And they, this bad, bad dream just comes out of nowhere. Just like the devil just sends that in your mind. He'll do the same thing with your thoughts and feelings. Um, especially before you're transformed. When you're more transformed to the image of God, the devil really loses his power to be able to just interject, insert thoughts um, and lie, lies. It's, it's part of submit to God, resist the devil, and he must flee. So the more you're doing that, he's forced to flee. He can't just like hijack your mind constantly. But in the beginning, before you have progressed in the spiritual realm by having victory after victory by surrendering to god and continually walking in authority and rejecting lie after lie before you get to that point where you've had just so much victory and you've devil can't even try before then there are going to be random thoughts and uh, feelings that'll be impure sometimes and what that is, is the devil's trying to lie to you to try to get you to think that it's your original thoughts and that that's really you. And so that you'll act on it. And so as a man thinketh, so he is, the Bible says. But really that means like as a man believes that that thought is his or her original thought, so he or she is. That's what the devil wants. He wants to try to trick you and lie to you with these thoughts that pop up in your mind from him to make you think I'm a bad person because I had this thought I'm so sinful I have such a horrible heart that's what the devil wants and like and so as a man thinketh or woman thinketh so he or she is so the devil knows the power of that the devil knows the power of when you actually believe these thoughts are you like this is my thought then you will act on it because of that that's how powerful it is as a man or a woman think thinks so he or she is you will act on it you will speak on it so i want to first share with you about like when you're taking the evaluation of your heart that um when you when you're finding these impure thoughts and feelings you're having um don't don't like get down on yourself and think I'm, I don't even, I'm just awful. I'm just ha constantly having horrible thoughts and feelings. Understand the spiritual realm, okay? And understand that when you're not acting on these things, you are not being sinful. When you're not speaking the thoughts that you're having. But you do need to make sure you're rejecting them. You, you need to make, so if you're doing that part, you're not acting and speaking on the thoughts and feelings you're having and you're rejecting, you're not sinning. And you're actually having victory over the devil. Hallelujah. And as you keep on doing that, the devil will not be able to put those thoughts and feelings anymore. And you won't have those thoughts and feelings. And that's you being transformed in, more into God work. Because God, I mean, he's, his thoughts are all good. You know, he's not having the devil send him a thought. that he, No, God's thoughts are all good. Good. And his feelings are good. There's no bad in him, right? So that's how you will be. So I want you to pay attention now to these certain um, impurities of the heart, these certain uh, feelings that you have. And some of you might be just having the feelings but have never acted on them. And some of you are acting on them. You're having the feelings and you're acting on them. So here we go. So all of these impurities of the heart, um, when you have these, you will also have pride. Pride just, it comes with it. Jealousy, jealousy. So um, why there is pride attached to jealousy is because to have jealousy means that you don't think this person deserves what they have and you want what that person has. And you're like, technically that's what jealousy is. Technically you think, why does that person have that? I should have that. I've worked hard. I'm great, you know, I deserve this. I've sacrificed this, this, and this. Um, why are they having all that success and I am not? Why did they get all that luck in their life, blessing in their life, favor in their life, and I did not? And then you become bitter and you become like kind of angry at that person and kind of blaming that person. So that's pride. That's um, 
that's thinking that you are so great and you've done so many things that you deserve something. Um, and, and, and this is the thing, like we need to understand our identity as servants of God, that we don't even deserve to have breath in our lungs, but it's the goodness of God. So every blessing that we have been given, every ability we've been given has come from God. Do not get it twisted. We should never feel entitled to anything, 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 anything. We should see ourselves as servants of God and we should be so focused on God getting all the glory and just serving God. Like seeing our, ourselves, like Mary said, Mary received this call in her life and she said from the angel and the first words, I'm like, one of the first words out of her mouth was, let it be done to me as you have said, for I am a servant of the Lord. We must have this identity. And this is part of having the fear of God. I am a servant. I am a servant. Uh, we, we better not feel entitled. We should not feel entitled to have anything, anything. We should not have in, be entitled to have a, a spouse and children and a house and a car and a career we enjoy. And we shouldn't feel entitled for any nice things, money. We should not feel entitled to have anything. I mean, this is the truth. Like everything is a gift from God. It's God's grace that we are saved today, that we are not bound by sin and going to hell. It's only God's gift he's given to us. Why would we feel entitled? But it's this worldly mindset seeped into us that we think we deserve things. So if you live with this heart of not entitlement, but Lord, I don't deserve anything. Everything is just a gift that I didn't deserve. When you live with, in that, with that heart, you won't be jealous. You'll see other people be blessed and you'll be like, praise God. And you'll be, in, you'll be inspired. You'll be inspired like, wow, God could do that with their lives. Wow, I'm inspired by what God can do with my life. You live in a every day being grateful because you're grateful even just to have breath in your lungs. You're grateful for the small things and you're not annoyed and complaining that you don't have other things. You won't have jealousy then, but this jealousy is rooted in pride of entitlement. And it is gross. It is, it is so impure. It is, it is one of the biggest impurities in the body of Christ today is the pride and the jealousy together. Christians being jealous of other Christians. Christians feeling entitled to have what other Christians have, like the family, success, ministry, platform, anointing. We need to evaluate our hearts and let God purify us. It's gross. It's, it's gross. We need to get this out of ourselves and we need to, we need to make this a priority and not just let it slide anymore. We need to be real with ourselves when there's jealousy. And so if you're having jealous thoughts, if you're not acting on it, if you're not meditating on it, like, like meditating on how you want bad for a person, meditating on like how you're annoyed by this person. Um, if you're not doing that, if you're not acting on the jealousy, like trying to bring the person down in some way, um, if you're not, if you're not complaining out loud, even in your prayers, like, God, I don't understand why they have this. And I don't even that saying in a nice voice is pride and not good, you know, is acting on the jealousy. So, but if you're not doing like all of those things, if you're not acting on the jealousy by meditating, speaking and acting and complaining in your prayers, if you're not doing those things, you are not a jealous person. But if you are having a lot of jealous thoughts, this is a red flag. Because right now we're, we're, I'm talking about evaluating your heart. And so to have humility is the most important thing. And we need to, we need to care about this more, like, like more than anything. Like, I must be humble. I must never be prideful. I never want to be prideful. We should have the fear of God like this. <laughs> every day like this should be a priority so um we need to be on the lookout 
we need to be on the lookout for open doors to the devil. We need to be on the lookout of, of red flags in our heart, red flags of, oh man, this could turn into pride real quick. I got to take care of this. I got to bring this to God. I got to be naked before God. I got to allow him to take care of this. I got to allow him to take this out of me. I got to repent of these thoughts I'm having. I got to confess this, Lord. I don't want to be having these thoughts. I don't want any jealousy in me. Take it, Lord. And then begin to thank God. Thank God for all he's blessed you and meditate on, on, on all your blessings. So, so that entitlement junk gets out gets out of you we see this all over the word of god we see this this jealousy in the people of god bringing such destruction destruction um we see joseph you know saying i had this dream i had this vision this from god and i saw you bow, bowing down he's just saying this vision he had and his brothers immediately got so jealous like what? So you're like better than us? Ah. And our father gave you that coat. He favors you. Ah. Like that's pride. That's pride. That's pride. The brothers instead should be like, I mean, there's a reason that, I mean, Joseph was chosen. He had a more like precious heart, you know, more pure and godly and precious heart than his brother's. There was, I mean, it wasn't like, it wasn't like, um, it wasn't like Joseph's father. It wasn't like Jacob was being like a bad father and like singling Joseph out and making, you know, it, it wasn't a situation like that by him favoring him and giving him this coat, beautiful coat. It wasn't, that wasn't the situation. It was just like, he, he was special. He was set apart. And he had a special heart that God had, God himself had chosen to advance his kingdom, to be a leader. Um, and it was just honor coming to him and love and, 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 and even, you know, people who are leaders, people who are like chosen, you know, look at, look at David, look at Joseph going in the pit in the prison. They, they went through. They go through more intense trials. So like they need more encouragement and love and, you know, like they, they go through rougher things. So they should be able to have that encouragement and love and honor, you know? So that was the, that was the situation. So the brothers should have instead been like, been humble and been like, oh, wow, like what an amazing brother we have. Like he has a precious heart that I can learn from. And I'm grateful we have him, his heart that we can learn from. Um, I'm inspired to change by seeing his heart. You know, that's how the brothers should have been. But instead they were prideful and they were like, he should not have what he has. I should have that because I'm so entitled and then they ended up wanting to kill him. And that was all jealousy. So you see how jealousy and pride are, are always together. Um, so if you're seeing jealous thoughts in yourself, know it's a red flag and bring it to God, repent and have the fear of God in the area. Like, Lord, I don't want any jealous thoughts. This, I mean, serious, serious business about this. I don't want any jealous thoughts, Lord. I don't want to be jealous at all. I want to love all your children and honor them and cheer them on and be a sister or brother to them. Be their cheerleader and say, way to go and, and have the revelation that we're on the same team. Lord, help me have the revelation we're on the same team. And if they win, it's a win for me. It's a win for all of us because we're one body. Okay, the next area of impurity in your heart that you need to be on guard of uh, that also comes where pride will be attached to it is being quick to judge people being quick to judge people so um, it is our job not to judge people it is our job to have discernment it is our job to look at fruits and discern good fruits versus bad fruits so that we can be led by the holy spirit of where god wants us to be planted 
in a ministry and to receive from and to receive his true word from and to be covered and to receive the anointing and also to be able to have that discernment with who God wants us to bring close in our lives so we're not bringing the wrong people close to us. So we need to have um, the the good kind of judgment, that, but it's discernment. That's all about discernment of for my spiritual health, for your personal spiritual health, so that there's no open doors for you. That's the only time we're supposed to like judge but it's not it's 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 discernment really that's when god talks about like when he when he does tell us to judge it's meaning that in scripture it's it's that kind of judge but people twist the scripture that where jesus says to judge um and they 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 use it as an excuse to judge with a skeptical and critical and bad heart bad spirit behind it other people and tear them down and speak against them and bring harm to them they use it as an excuse we are not called to do this we're not called to tear people down we are called to discern and look at the fruits and be led for our own spiritual health but not to tear people down and and also we should not be looking at spec the bible says you're looking, stop looking at the speck in your brother's eye when you have a log in your own eye. It, that verse is powerful because the revelation of this that the Lord gave me was, it's interesting that it says, stop looking at the speck when you have a log in your eye. Log, it's bigger than the, than the speck that you're seeing. The meaning of that is that the, to judge people, to be quick to judge and to be having this heart of like, I for sure know better and I know all and this person is bad and wrong and coming with this like hateful tearing down spirit and heart um, and know it all uh, that is bad like that's really impure in the heart it's really impure and so if you're coming in that way you automatically have a log in your eye like that's automatically worse than the speck that you're seeing. Sometimes a person doesn't even have a speck, but you are prideful and you are being like the Pharisees. And I mean, they were accusing Jesus, judging Jesus, and they were so sure about it, but there was no speck in Jesus's eye, right? So sometimes there's, many times there's no speck in that eye, in the person's eye. And sometimes there is, sometimes you can be right about something, but you, if though you're right about something, you're not called to get on your high horse and tear somebody down and come with a bad spirit. That's not our calling. That's not our calling. Um, if there's someone doing wrong, God is the God is the judge. God will if they are in a place of leadership. If you're there in a place of ministry, because this is the big area when people do the whole judgment thing. Um. God is the one that will take down that person in that ministry. The Bible says that the uh, that he humbles the pride, the prideful, and he lifts the humble. He tears down. So if there's someone with pride, if there's someone in error, God Himself will take them down, and He does not call us to be the ones like helping Him. <laughs> he will do it Himself. So um, if you are noticing. Like evaluate your heart and you're feeling like quick to judge people. Know that that's not your place. Your place is to to see people with the eyes of compassion, with God's eyes of love. And you are called to have discernment and see like, yeah, this is off. This is this is God. This is not like you are called to be that way. You're called to to judge in that way, to discern. But for your own spiritual health, not to play God and tear down somebody and speak bad against somebody that's not that's not your calling so once you're seeing that quick to judge um in your heart uh know that that's pride there know that these things it's a big red flag that's you got to take care of these things with god you got to bring them to god repent um because it's it it can really lead 
to dest- to destruction. Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 16, 18. This is why we need to have um, such fear of God in this area that we would never have pride. Uh, Proverbs 16, 5. The Lord, listen to this. Listen to this one. This was this one's a this one should help the fear of God come in our hearts if it's not there. Proverbs 16, 5. The Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this. They will not go unpunished. Whoa. This is why we need to have the fear of God. This is serious. The Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this. They will not go unpunished. Pride is such a big issue because this is, I mean, it, it, it's always pride that is leading people to be vessels of the devil and actually do damage to God's kingdom. <laughs> That's what happened with Saul. It was pride. Pride and jealousy that made him try to kill the anointed one of God, David. Joseph's brothers, it was jealousy and pride that made them to try to kill Joseph and put him in a pit to die and then sold him to slavery. It was pride and jealousy in the Pharisees that led to that made Jesus to be crucified, tortured and crucified, was their pride and also being so quick to judge. So the the Pharisees, they had pride, they had jealousy, and they had that quick to judge spirit. So um, pride is the most, is like the most dangerous thing we can have in our hearts it's the most dangerous thing we can have because it, it it leads to being it leads to being deceived by the angel of light, the devil masquerading himself as the voice of God. Um, I mean that that was the Pharisees like they're they're like so so many of them were determined they were right so many of them were determined that Jesus was a false prophet so they needed he should be killed they were determined of this so it opened that door for them to be so deceived um, by the angel of light to kill Jesus. And that's what we see today. I've seen like for myself and other servants of God, whenever someone's talking against them and then unfortunately that many times leads others away from that ministry, from where they were receiving deliverance and from where God had called them to be planted, to receive the anointing. Um, I've seen all of this. I've seen all the destruction of, you know, of God's kingdom in that area of people being led astray because of, of people saying this person's false when they're true, of people making up lies, um, of people just speaking bad things, slandering, and every time it's pride and jealousy and being quick to judge every time i've seen it happen and not just that but like i've seen in my own ministry and then also other people's ministries um i've seen like people leave where god wanted them to stay and be planted and live out their purpose and i'd see them leave and i'd see time after time It was because of pride. It was because of um, being quick to judge. It was because of jealousy. And it was because of this next impure impure part of the heart that I'm going to share with you right now, which is selfishness and being very focused on themselves and being successful. So... This is another big one that that pride goes hand in hand. When you are so focused on your own success, when you're so focused on your own um, ambitions, when you're so focused on how people see you, when you're so focused on, um, I, w- I want to try to find my purpose and oh, I think I found it. and But being too obsessed with like, 
trying to find it and succeed there rather than your focus being, Lord, I want to be in your will and your timing. And me personally, I wanted a, I'm not saying me personally, but like, like, like you, like we're saying to God, me, I wanted a family by now. I wanted this by now. I wanted to have a house by now. I wanted to not be living in this small apartment by now, by this age. I want, you know, I wanted my parents to see that I could, you know, have a, not be living like paycheck to paycheck and have, they could have grandkids. Like I had all these desires, but Lord, it doesn't, matter like I throw all that away I like all of this my timing and what I want and how people see me I throw that all away and I just want to be in your will I just want to serve you God this is very important this is a big one when we have we so many people they just they want to look good they want to be successful and God can have them in this place yet. I mean, that is God's will for you to um, walk in the abundant life in every area, to not be living paycheck to paycheck anymore, to have a house, you know, a nice place to live. Like God wants that for you. And that's his plan for you. And beautiful desires of your heart that you have that he's given you like a family and children. Like he wants it that's coming. And um, to walk in the anointing, he wants that for you. And that's coming. And um, all, all of these things, like it's coming, but it's many times it's not when you want it. It's, it's later that God has that plan. Like that first God needed to take you through the process. He needs to take you through battles to refine you. And he needs to stretch you. And so what happens is a lot of people get impatient in that place of process and they're holding on so much to their selfish ambitions that the angel of light comes in and they're led astray. There's so many people that start their start ministries too soon and their ministries die. There's so many people that aren't called to do something and they start doing it just because they of a selfish ambition they're called to do something else where they will really prosper and really be used in the anointing so powerfully the most powerful not here you know like even like some people may be called to be an apostle but they're a pastor like even that some people they 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 even feel in their hearts like i want to I feel I want to preach and, and, and they get zealous, but they, they forget God in that, in what they're feeling in their heart. They forget about God's timing and they just run with their feelings. They run, they can even have success in certain areas. You know, um, success does not equal God speaking. Success does not equal God's timing. Um, like sometimes it does. Sometimes a video going viral can be God's breath on it and can be evidence and sign of God, of it being God. But every viral video isn't done by God. And we got to be careful of these areas of success. Of We got to be careful when people start to, um, you know, in encourage us that we don't let it go to our heads and that we don't forget God in this area where we're just like, we run with something. We run with something because of success, because of what people are saying. And we forget God. We have to be careful. We have to be so careful. This is a sneaky way the devil comes. There's people with good hearts. There's people who um, want to be, want to see people set free and want to be used in the anointing but they haven't surrendered that the selfish ambition part in their heart they haven't fully surrendered that yet and they they're really a little impatient to be really walking in exactly their purpose you know like the exact where they're supposed to be and so they just run with something too fast just because they haven't they run ahead of god 
just because they haven't surrendered that selfish ambition part of their heart, their, um, their desire to be successful and look successful and look good. They haven't surrendered that, and that's an open door for the angel of light to come. So um, these, you know, the devil can send success. The devil can send something that looks like success, and it can be a test. It can be a test from God, a test of your humility. This is really important once you, um, once you are being planted where the anointing is, once you are serving where the anointing is, once you are being close like being close to your spiritual father, your spiritual mother, um, you have to amp up your fear of God. You have to amp up the humbling yourself. You have to amp up the evaluation of your heart because the devil comes in a sneaky way because like this impartation is really real. God is releasing impartation of anointing um, to all who come, like to all who come to these online lives and in person, like when I re say I release this anointing, it's really being released impartation. And there's many testimonies, many of people who received impartation and demons started trembling right away in their presence from young teenagers it happening immediately pretty much to pastors like pastor heather who will be facilitating service leading service when i'm in south africa that sunday on may 14th and it's going to be powerful by the way it's going to be a testimony sharing and celebrating uh the two-year anniversary of revival breaking out it's going to be so powerful but she came humbly. She's in her 60s and she's pastored a church with her husband for years and never saw the power of God move and just hungered for people to be free in her church. And she came humbly um, to me just a few weeks after coming. This was two years ago, about almost two years ago when revival first broke out. She came humbly like to me and it's like, I need what you have. I want what you have because I want people to be free in my church. Like she just came with just that simple pure heart and her heart was pure so god released the anointing god doesn't release the anointing upon people who are impure but it also doesn't mean that you're like perfect when he releases the anointing we have to be careful we're not prideful like oh because i see the anointing working through me i am so great like no 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 because god doesn't release the anointing upon perfect people he'll release it upon pure hearts but that doesn't mean you're immediately transformed into the image of God. And also in this revival, God is just really ready to move. And so he's releasing his anointing like fast now upon his people. Um, so anyways, uh, Pastor Heather, like three days later, she had a service and demons started trembling and people were set free. And it was a woman who had gone to the church for so many years and was stuck in bondage. And then that day she was set free finally. <sighs> And now people are free every Sunday at her church. And this is just one example. There's been so many testimonies, so many testimonies of people receiving impartation. Just coming to a revival service one time, um, a woman just testified from Australia that she's been receiving online and she received impartation. And she's a teacher, a school teacher at a Catholic school. And now, like every day, she's leading her children through um, renouncing and they're getting delivered and coming to Jesus, her children. I mean, her students in her class, <laughs> hallelujah, revival is now. So this impartation is so real. The anointing is becoming not so rare anymore. God is choosing to release it, imparting. But um, man, we have to be so careful to not be prideful that once, re I mean, the anointing is so needed and it's so shocking. It's, it's so powerful that, once you receive it, you can just run with it. And that's what we have to be careful with, to not run with it, to not just be like, oh, this means that I'm supposed to start a ministry now because I have the anointing. I'm seeing, you know, no, we need to wait on God's timing. If it's God's calling for you to actually start your own ministry, and if it is his timing, you have to be very careful or else you're, you could 
you could be jumping ahead of God, therefore not walking in his grace. And the ministry could just die out and the favor is not there. The grace is not there. You could see demons be cast out, but because the anointing is working in you. But, but what God does is he releases the anointing and then he tests you with it. So he tests to see how you'll, what you'll do with it. Um, if you'll be humble, if you'll be looking to him for everything, or if you'll just run with it as like a successful thing. It's like, oh, great. This will be, I'll be successful now or people will be drawn to me now. You know, we have to be so careful that that stuff isn't in our heart. But the more anointing, when you receive anointing and the more anointing you receive, the more humble you should be, the more you need to humble yourself, the more you need to humble yourself. Like me, myself, I'm like, I don't, I just, I'm so humbled. I'm so humbled and I'm, I'm just, I don't feel like deserving or anything. I just feel like a normal person. You know, that God chose to use and I'm just so humbled and I don't see it as like something I, I'm i worthy of or I deserve. Yes, I obeyed. I obeyed and I sacrificed a lot and I went through a lot. But like all that I went through is like, is nothing, you know? I mean... All that I've gone through, I don't I don't think that when we go through things, we should see that we should have a reward. I just think we should we should see ourselves as servants of Christ. And so if that means being in valleys and going through um, suffering and hardship so that we can be transformed more into his image, then that's fine. And I see like the the things I've gone through, the pain I've gone through, the suffering I've gone through, the sacrifice I've gone through, all of that, the persecution, all the things like I didn't deserve, like people making up lies about me, all that. Like I see, I see it as beautiful. It, 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 it transformed me into more of God's image. That's the reward. I don't see that I deserve the anointing now. I deserve more anointing. I deserve honor from people. I deserve, you know, a, a nice house, I, I, money. I, I don't, I don't see that I deserve those things, you know, like I just feel so humbled. I just feel like, Lord, I just see that it's all God, you know, the anointing, all that he's done, um, growth in the ministry, all the door I just see that it's all him I, I know that he used his vessels I know he used me uses me I know um that my obedience was important but I don't see it as like I deserve I deserve anything I just think the reward of being transformed into God's image is everything and so it's very important to have that heart of, Lord, I can't believe that you're entrusting this anointing to me. I can't believe you've given me these blessings. I can't believe, like, I can't believe, wow, like, I'm so in awe, Jesus, you're, you know, but not like, yeah, I deserve this, or hallelujah, now I have success, or, mm -mm, you know. So we should be humbling ourselves more and more with the more anointing, with the more blessings that God gives, with the um, more he lifts us, with the more he entrusts us with, with the more anointing that he entrusts us with, we should humble ourselves more and we should take it, we should have the fear of God more of like, you're entrusting me with this, Lord. Lord, I just want to do, to do with this anointing as you please. Like, to be perfectly in your will, never a step out. This is a big deal what you've entrusted me with, Lord. And I just want to be in your will. We should have that heart every day. Amen. All right. So the last part I'm going to share um, about that you need to be aware in your heart, the value of your heart in of impurity is feeling that you only need yourself. 
This is one of the biggest reasons why people don't walk in the anointing because they feel they only need themselves. They don't feel that they need other people. 1 Corinthians 11, 1 uh, Apostle Paul was a spiritual father. He says, you have many teachers. You only have one father. I became your spiritual father. This is in the word of God, that he was a spiritual father to his son, Timothy, and to many others. And he says, 1 Corinthians 11, 1, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. <laughs> Why didn't he just say, follow Christ? Follow my example. It shows that, it shows that one of the really big ways that God transforms us into his image, one of the really big ways that God leads us and guides us and directs us, one of the really big ways God speaks to us is through other people. And not just anyone. But through your spiritual father, your spiritual mother, through the fivefold ministry, Ephesians 4.11, God gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping of the believers so that they would no longer be immature, deceived by the devil, tossed around by different doctrines of the devil, but that they would be mature vessels of God equipped for works of service so that they could be victorious over the devil and be powerful vessels of God, vessels of the anointing themselves. So we need people. We need the fivefold ministry. We need ministers whom God has, has chosen to speak through. Um, you need to have this in your heart. God will purposely make it, like he will purposely hide he will hide um, his some of his word, some of his high direction, some of his wisdom in servants of God in their mouths. <laughs> You're praying in your prayer in your room, and you want God to speak in an audible voice. You want him, you want to open up the word of God and see the answer right there. You want to hear his voice speaking to you how you want, but God has chosen to hide it in your spiritual father, your spiritual mother, in an apostle, in a, the, the minister, the, a teacher at your church, the pastor of your church. <laughs> it's one of the big, 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 big ways that God speaks, that God directs you into wisdom. And this is what so many people miss out on. They think they can just do it on their own. And the big problem for a lot of people, oh, they, they're they grateful for their spiritual mother, spiritual father. They're grateful for their pastor. They're grateful for the teaching they receive. They're grateful. But, and they receive. But when it comes to certain things, selfish ambition, I want to do this. They've already decided. They're not asking God. They're not open to God. Like, is this your will? How do I walk in this area? Do, do I go here? Do I start this ministry? You know, they're just running and they're not open. Like, Lord, speak to me how you want to speak to me. Like, speak to me. Because if you come that way and let's say you are able, to, you're in a place where you're able to have access, you're able to like ask questions to your spiritual father or mother, which by the way, I do a subscriber Q&A live every usually every week i'm traveling like crazy this month so it'll be sporadic but um like friday at 5 p.m pacific time i'm doing a subscriber q a live on instagram and this is where it's more intimate it's only for subscribers um and so there's not a million people on asking tons of questions like if you ask a question there's a good chance that i'll that I'll see it and answer it. This is what the subscriber Q and A lives are: is people as I just open up for Q and A, like a mentorship time, a time where you can ask questions, and people write in the comments their questions, and I answer them live. So, by the way, because I know I'm I'm a spiritual mom to many of you out there. You don't you you don't need to be um, like on the phone with your spiritual mom or dad for them to be your spiritual mom or dad. Um, a spiritual mother or father is the leader of the church where you are planted, where God has called you to be planted, uh, to receive from to, and and to have a covering over. And so um, if you are planted at Fivefold Church, I'm your spiritual mother and I'm so honored to be. Um, and so if you do have questions, you know, that subscri subscriber Q&A is a great place to ask questions. 
Um, and you can email, but it's not like a, we, we don't have a huge team answering emails right now, but like if there's something really pressing, you can, you can email. Um, and I, there is a chance I might be able to see it and respond, but just to be aware, we get so many emails. <laughs> That's why I say subscriber Q and a is a, is a good one. Um, and if you want to subscribe, just go to my Instagram and on the right side, there's a subscribe button, just hit subscribe. So, um, yeah, so this is where a lot of people miss it. They don't, they don't surrender certain things, like usually it's selfish ambition things. And so they, it doesn't even like come to them to ask God and to, if God's leading many times to ask to have the risk, the, the honor to respect and respect to ask a spiritual father, mother, like, is this okay? Is this right? Um, is this safe in the spiritual realm? If there's that question. And also that also includes just listening to the teaching too. Like when you listen to the teaching, like today, you should come with an open child, like teachable heart so that if there was like impurities of your heart, for example, that as you're listening today, because you came with that heart of not, not like, I just don't need anybody. I can hear God on my own. I can do everything on my own only all the time. But, um, but you come with this heart of like, Lord, speak to me. I want to hear from you. I want you to correct me through Apostle Catherine right now, for example. When you come with that heart, you'll be able to hear God speak to you what he wants to speak. And you'll be able to, to, to be led into all truth and led into his will. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So these are some big keys of how you can be humble and, and, and areas you can spot out where there's potential, where there is pride or potential for pride, the red flags. This will help you evaluate your heart daily and live in the fear of God. And this is, this is, this is what is needed to receive the anointing. So when you take this word I share today seriously, you will see God pour out the anointing in your life in ways that will really surprise you and amaze you and shock you. Hallelujah.